And I think, you know, you talked about kind of the mental fatigue and mm -hmm. I think, you know, coaches, you know, could, could stand to account for that more. I mean, mm -hmm. I think that we all kind of sit down and we have our plans and we have our, our loading patterns and we're like, all right, well, this is the physical fatigue that people are kind of carrying mm -hmm. through or in the workout. And I think people just don't want to appreciate the, the, the mental fatigue that comes with various mm -hmm. trainings and a lot of times accounting for mental fatigue that's just not anticipated that, mm -hmm. you know, that, you know, the circumstances changed something on this way that happened. It created that, this kind of, uh, this mm -hmm. fatigue, um, that you need to account for you yes. know, in your training. Mm -hmm. And, and it was, is, um, fascinating when I was talking to, you know, Steve Gladstone and, and he was talking about the, the need for him to be able to adapt his training based on where the students were within their academic yes. commitments, mm -hmm. you know, to, to be able to just step back and even though, you know, you know, clearly Steve is, is coaching some of the best athletes yes. in the country, of being able to, for him to be able to recognize and say, you know what, these athletes are going to be, they're not going to be as primed for good training at this time because they're focusing on these exams mm -hmm. and these academic commitments. Um, and, um, and it was really, it was really awesome for me to hear him saying that, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I think that, you know, other coaches, we, we got to get out of this mentality of just, you got to be tough and you got to push mm -hmm. through, um, which is true in certain circumstances, mm -hmm. but there's other circumstances where you got to be like, all right, well, no, let's kind of, we got to rest and relax. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, and realizing that the recovery comes during the rest, and that means that mental that rest as well is going to be critical. Well, I think what what plays along with that idea, I think in our in our coaching um, in general, I think especially at the youth level, and to go back it, it, to you know to your, your question at the very beginning, it, it is it is um, it's getting a little more difficult, I think. But I think getting away from either fear or pressure based mm -hmm. uh, coaching of our of our athletes and our and our teams. Um, Rowing, especially competitive rowing, is is very demanding, and I think that um, if you try to go down that avenue of um, adding extra pressure to what's already a, a truly demanding sport, you know, we got to train harder, otherwise we're going to lose to X crew this weekend, or or um, you know, uh, even something as innocuous as you know, you know. Don't get sick because then I'll have to put someone in your seat. I mean, yeah. if you, if I, I think, I think fear and pressure are some of the um, worst motivators there are. Oh, cool. uh, from this, from the simple reason that, that again, um, no one, no one goes out there to do a bad job. Mm -hmm. um, and so, if you make your coaching about just don't do a bad job as opposed to go out and do as good a job as you can. I think that's motivationally that inversion, um, can be, can be really, really powerful. Um, in our program, at least, uh, I don't think we, we talk as much. Um, we don't spend as much time focusing on say winning or things of, of our control. And I really have to, um, I, I, I really, you know, I, I have a debt to, to Larry Gluckman and a talk he gave, uh, maybe, the, the, or the talk that I was at maybe 10 or 15 years ago, where um, he, he made it crystal, crystal clear that, that when he was coaching at, at, at Trinity, um, one of the reasons for his success uh, with, with that program was that he really emphasized to those athletes that they were not going to worry about anything they couldn't control. Whether that was the weather, the time of the race, the water conditions, uh, or their opponents, mm -hmm. you don't control anything about your opponent. So I think that listening to to that explanation of this idea that that your opponent is an uncontrollable, so only worry about those things we can control. It seems like a fairly simple concept, mm -hmm. but I think um, most of us, especially faced with you know a, a, a heat sheet and there's all six lanes and you start doing all your calculations. Um, we get excited and, and uh, you know, again, our, our, our kids, you know, are, are not as dumb as, or as, as they're, they're, they're not as, they're not not tuned in. I mean, when, 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 as a coach, our body language and our, um, you know, if, if we wig out, they're going to wig out. Mm -hmm. And if, 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 if it's as simple as, all right, um, lane three, 1040, here's your bow marker, here's the plan, go. Um, I think that that's much, uh, th that sort of keeps it in the realm of what you can control in a way that's very different than looking over at lane five and four. And I think these guys, lane one has always had a fast start and, and all of that. 
Um, it's natural, the way our minds work as coaches, to want to game it out, to, 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 to sort of run the race in our heads before it, before it happens, and I'm certainly as um, prone to that as, 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 as anybody, but I think I've, I've at least personally gained a lot of, um, I mean, it, 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 it sounds like an oversimplification, but, but there have been a few times with some very good crews that I've had where I've been so in tune with this crew where the pep talks might have been five minutes. Yeah. So it's like you, 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 drive, you, drive the, you drive the trailer, the kids get off the bus, they rig the boat, and literally it's, it's all right, your race, is, your race is at 11, standard warm up, you're lane two, there's the lake, go have fun. Yeah. And, and then they would go out and they would just like, come down like gangbusters. And, and it, it, it's not always that simple. Some crews need more preparation than others. But if you can, if you can again, I, I found, that, I found that, that speech by Larry Gluckman to be so, um, it, it made it so clear that if, if you, it, it's a waste of time to focus on those things you can't control. Um, and I think, um, you know, I, I love that insight because you know I come from a running background, and yeah. so I was cross country and mm -hmm. track and field where there is a high degree of intimacy yeah. and competition. Yeah. Um, to rowing, where there's essentially none. You know, it's like the only contact you have in competition is psychological, mm -hmm. um, and you can shut that off if you right. want to. Right. Um, and so, and it's funny that. You know, just when you said that, it kind of clicked. You know, as coaches, coaches are always saying, you know, don't look out of the boat. You know, don't look at your competition. Just keep your head forward. Focus on what's going on. But yet, those same coaches could be talking about, well, this other crew is this fast, and they might have a good start, and they might be doing a ten, and we got to respond to that ten. And so, if the coach is coming into them and 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 sharing his focus on the other crews, then it's going to be natural for those athletes in the situation to be like, well, what's going on? Whereas if the coach you know, is, is completely focused on, on the, that, those athletes, you know, and can kind of shut out what's behind them, like mm -hmm. putting blinders on the racing course, you right. know, and, and just say, focus on the task at hand, then those athletes are going to be more yes. equipped psychologically to execute well, in that way. They'll also be more relaxed, yeah. and there's less of that pressure and fear, I think. Yeah. Um, it's, not, it's not foolproof. You, you need a plan, and I think that, that being aware of your opponent's strengths and weaknesses, certainly. I mean, you, you'd, you'd be negligent as a coach to not have done your homework or not to be aware, but conceivably you share that with the coxswain or you build it into your plan as a, as a, a, a focused move at some point. But I think that um, it can be, it, you know, it can be a real red herring to go and, and uh, Put all your energy on focusing on you know this one team you need to beat or your one big your one big rival or, or e even the one team you need to knock out to move on to the to the next right. level. Um, you don't want to put all of your eggs in someone else's basket. Right. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah.